Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually we will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. Today on the podcast, we're going to be covering some high-profile lawsuits against ChatGPT and also why 65% of websites are about to get very direct access to AI. So stay tuned, and we are going to dive in. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that there is a radio host from Georgia named Mark Walter. He is currently suing OpenAI over claims um, that ChatGPT said he uh, essentially embezzled funds from a gun rights nonprofit. So this is just like a classic case, I think, of ChatGPT um, hallucinating that we've seen before. This isn't anything super new. There was also another story earlier this year where a mayor in Australia said he was going to sue ChatGPT because um, I believe it said he... Uh, what did it say? He committed like financial fraud or something. In any case, this isn't something like super new, this concept. Um, I do find this kind of funny and very ludicrous. I think with all of the disclaimers ChatGPT has around, you know, it being a research tool and it being in beta um, and literally having disclaimers that it can, it's known to make stuff up. Um, I think it's kind of funny when people have this, uh, this idea that, I don't know, it, it's, you, you can like sue it for saying something wrong. This case in general is kind of interesting. I I think it's kind of funny. Essentially what happened was that there was um, someone named Fred Real. So he is an editor over at a um, over at a gun outlet called Ammo Land. And he was doing some research for an article. Anyways, he was asking about a case uh, called Second Amendment Foundation versus Ferguson. And he was, you know, he was doing some research on for this article. And when he asked ChatGPT for a summary of that case, Essentially, it brought up this other guy named um, Walters, and it said that the case was about Walters being the uh, chief financial officer and that he had defrauded and embezzled funds from the organization. So it's kind of funny, like it like because on the one hand, I'm like, well, is this legit? Did they just like prompt it to say something crazy like, you know, make up a story about why Walters embezzled money from blah, blah, blah. And then ChatGPT can just like make up a story about that. And then I don't know if they wanted to like just get clicks or kind of, you know, make some sort of big deal. Um, that would be easy. However, this guy wasn't brought up at all. It was just straight up, you know, they were asking them or one reporter, a news reporter was asking ChatGPT about a case. Um, and then it brought that up. And I think that he went and told the guy and then there's this whole Thing because apparently Walters never even worked for the foundation mentioned and in the entire like um, Second Amendment Foundation versus Ferguson filing Walters name never appeared anywhere so it's just like super random that somehow it pulled this guy named Walter into this and spit that out um, so can you sue chat GPT for saying something wrong I think it's gonna be interesting uh, there the, nothing's disclosed in this yet and so I think we're gonna find out if uh find out what the case is personally i hope that chad gpt wins this i think it's kind of ridiculous um fact check every you should fact check everything that comes out of chad gpt um it's you know an ai model 
and there's no way to make it perfect. And I think the alternative is like if you really could sue and win, um, then ChatGPT would get sued into oblivion for all the random things that it's not perfect at, and I don't think it can ever be perfect. Um, and so I think in that case, it would not really be a viable product. And since it's such a beneficial product in so many areas, I personally think uh you should we should leave it so you can't sue it but that's just me it'll be interesting to see what happens the other thing i wanted to talk about today is the fact that wordpress which is according to hubspot and a lot of other reports um wordpress is used by around 65 percent of all websites using a content management system so like there are some webs there's a lot of websites that people might be like coding by hand um, so excluding you know those anyone that's using something like wix or squarespace or wordpress or anything else uh, that's about 65% of all of those. And I think, to be fair, it's still like 43% of all websites, period, on the internet. So this is like, come on, this is at least half of the websites on the internet. Um, and they are all going to be getting access to AI through a new plugin um, that WordPress is launching called Jetpack AI Assistant. Um, it's going to be available for free uh, for a limited time. So I think what's interesting is that Jetpack users get 20 free requests and then they have to pay 10 bucks a month after that. And Jetpack, the uh, the plugin, it's something that you've had to pay for in the past as well. So, um, you know, this isn't anything crazy, but essentially I think this is just kind of like the latest example of AI text generation being added to software. Um, and I think, you know, this is the biggest blogging and content management platform in the world. And I really think we're going to start seeing a lot more proliferation of AI into everything that is going on. Now, the reason that I think that this story is like interesting because it's like, oh, yeah, whatever, another chat GPT integration into a software. The reason I think this is important is because this is the number one blogging medium, meaning up until this point, like Google has said, if you write content with AI, we're going to, um, you know, lower it in the rankings, yada, yada. But what's, I, what I think is interesting with this is with an integration like this, like let's say this is on every single you know blog essentially, and let's say every single blog starts using AI to help augment their articles, doesn't mean they're going to write the whole thing by ChatGPT and just let it be. Like maybe they're writing and they're like, hey, write me a paragraph about X, Y, and Z based off of these five research points, and it spits something out, and they're like, okay, awesome, this is perfect. They edit a couple words and keep going. Then Google goes in and detects like, hey, this is written by AI, derank. Like here's what I'm, what, here's what I'm saying. I think that it is a little bit ludicrous to say we have to delist, devalue, or ban all AI content because inevitably there is going to be a lot of uh, stuff written by AI. And that doesn't mean it's just like we ask it to write a full on article, but like when you're developing something or you want to write it more concisely or quickly um, and you feed it a bunch of information and say, you know, based off of these like five different articles, like, make the point that X, Y, and Z is important and make sure that you discuss like these three points and it writes something for you really quickly. And you're like, oh, gee, thanks. I like saved me some time. You paste that paragraph in, you might edit a couple words. I think it's ludicrous to say that like people aren't going to like want to use that. We're not going to speed up um, the ability to share information and concepts and ideas with that, with that workflow. And so by, uh, by demoting it in Google or essentially punishing it, I think is really, I don't know, to me, it seems like a really big uh, bummer because it's, it seems kind of anti-progress um, where I see AI helping you write something better or faster, and now we're going to be punishing it. And it, I mean, it's similar to, you know, uh, teachers that are failing their classes if they use AI to help them write stuff. It's like, I don't know, on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, sure, it's great to learn to write things. But on the other hand, um, is it really is it really that important that you write every word? Or is it important that you thought logically about the arguments you're making and you bring in all of the data points and you think of all the concepts you want to tie together and then using AI to help you do that? Is that really so bad? So I think that's going to be the debate that we have. Um, I do think this is a really cool move by WordPress. This is going to have some big implications, like inevitably a lot of websites that you stumble across whether that's for recipes or other things are going to be there so i think that this is going to be pretty interesting to see how this continues to proliferate ai into everything we do and everything we see on the internet today and the one other thing uh, i would want to bring up is the fact that i wonder how important it is even for people to to be able to write like a lot of this ai content when you can think of a world now i'm not going to say like google and google search results are going to be irrelevant because obviously there's so much great content out there 
But like you can think of a world where people can get a lot of answers from chat GPT. And so maybe, um, you know, web traffic on a lot of these websites goes down. I would be curious to see if web traffic overall to websites has gone down since chat GPT came out because uh, a lot of people were able to get the answers directly on chat GPT to questions they had instead of having to go uh, to different websites. Now, of course, you always have to fact check everything out of chat GPT, as we mentioned in the earlier story. So I think that does throw a wrench in it and uh, not a wrench in it, but I think that is an important point that will make sure that, you know, a lot of these uh, different websites continue to be relevant. I think putting sources, citing your sources inside of ChatGPT is important to make sure that um, the answers are well thought out. And uh, I think this is probably just the next step in uh, sharing and consolidating information to the masses to help people learn more about the world around them. If you are looking for an innovative and creative community of people using ChatGPT, you need to join our ChatGPT creators community. I'll drop a link in the description to this podcast. We'd love to see you there where we share tips and tricks of what is working in ChatGPT. It's a lot easier than a podcast as you can see screenshots, you can share and comment on things that are currently working. So if this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the comment. We'd love to have you in the community. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.